Hi everyone, my name is Olivia O'Connor. I'm a woodcarver and today I'm here to show you the four basic cutting techniques. And to start with, I'll be demonstrating two different ways to hold your gouge. So first up, this is the mallet grip. Now I'm right-handed, so most of the power today will be coming from my right hand and my left hand will be my guiding hand. So mallet grip, left hand on the tool. I'm not holding it tight like that. It's a rel relaxed grip. Mallet in my right hand, and that's the mallet grip. Now, for the double-handed grip, almost exactly the same. Left hand holding the tool. Right hand, again, my power hand. Middle of my palm there on the back of my gouge. And I'll use my pressure forward and steady consistency like that. And for the double-handed grip, it's quite easy to swap it around to get into hard to reach places and use my left hand as the power. Alrighty, so let's get into it. Now this is a great practice video for beginners to carve along with. So it doesn't really matter what tools you're using, but just today I'm using feel gouges number seven, 18. So that seven refers to that sweep you see there. And the 18 is just 18 millimeters wide. So the first cut I'm gonna demonstrate for you is a stop cut using my left hand because I'm right-handed place the tool down there holding steady and hitting with my mallet just like that so you can just do a series of these cuts along with me And that's your stop cut. Next cut I'll be showing you today is a wedge cut. I'm gonna pivot off the ball of my left hand down on my timber like that. A loose but steady grip on my gouge and just tap with the mallet and I'm meeting that stop cut there. You can just practice a few of those as well. So that's our first two cuts done. So we've had a stop cut and your wedge cut. Next cut I'm gonna show you is a running cut. Now this can be used double-handed grip or with the mallet, but because I'm using very soft timber today, I'm just gonna go the double-handed grip like this. And just a running cut is I just keep pushing it through with a steady consistency through that timber grain. So just practice that. I'm coming at 45 degrees to that grain. Easiest way to attack a running cut. You can try going with your other hands the other way. Now I'm also going to demonstrate to you a running cut with a V-gouge. This is quite a large V-gouge I'm using today and that's just so you can better see what I'm doing. I'm using a number 15-8 feel. Now that 15 just refers to the angle of the V and the 8 is just 8 millimeters wide. So again I could use a mallet grip if I'm using harder timber but jelly tongue very soft so I'll be using the double handed grip gouge into the middle of my palm and just smooth consistent lines now I can change the angle I can come higher up for a much deeper cut or I can bring my back hand lower for a shallower cut there it's a good thing to always practice doing a few curved sweeps as well like this
Now you'll notice here, I'm still pivoting off the ball of my left hand there. And I'm twisting my whole body as I come around. Now the final cut I'm gonna show you today out of our four beginning cuts is a slicing cut. So it's literally gonna slice through the timber grain like that. So back to our shallow gouge. So we've got our two corners. The corners never get embedded in the timber in a slicing cut, but I'm starting on this side of the blade and I'm gonna finish on this side. So nice loose grip with my left hand and I'm twisting that gouge as I cut. Now this is a great cut to become proficient at because I'm actually slicing through that grain and those timber fibers rather than with the running cut, I was fudging into them like that. Whereas here, if I get into a bit more trouble, I can just slice my way through. And when you're cutting well with a slicing cut, it will sound very good. Keep practicing those four basic cuts. Doesn't matter if you're using slightly different sized gouges, just get the feel of working through the timber. And keep watching this video and I'm gonna show you two simple patterns we can put together using just those cuts. First simple pattern that I'm gonna show you today, you need a curved gouge. I'll be using a number 910 feel gouge. You can see that's quite a rounded shape. If you've got something more curved, go for it. Something a little shallower, just see how it works. So first up, we're just gonna be doing a series of stop cuts. Now you can mark these out with a ruler or just freehand as I'm doing so today. So lining these up. So once I've got a row like that, I'm now gonna spin my gouge the other way around and join from where the last stop cut ended to the tip of my tool, going the opposite direction. You can see, even though I'm using quite a loose hold on the gouge, I'm still anchoring off the ball of my left hand and my little finger are still balancing everything. So, now I have a series of S's. Here's where the fun begins. Starting from the back end of my pattern, so where my curve is, not the open side, I'm gonna do a wedge cut into that. Now it's really important I start this end and work my way forwards like this. I don't wanna start up this end and then come and do my second one because the little wall here then is virtually non-existent. And suddenly I'm pushing with a bit of force into very little timber. So now that I've done it along in one direction, you can either flip your timber around or for a bit of extra practice, swap your tools over. So now I'm driving with my left hand and using my right hand to guide. Just doing wedge cuts into that line of stop cuts that we did. So there you can see we're starting to create quite a fun little pattern using two very simple cuts 
You know, this would work great as a trim for a box or around a border. For centuries, wood carvers have passed down patterns from carver to carver, like the pattern I'm about to show you next. This one was taught to me by American wood carver Peter Fallonsby. It's a little bit more complicated than the first border trim pattern I showed you, but I think you're ready for it. Here we go. Okay, so for this pattern to first up, you're gonna need a compass. I'm using one with a pencil in it. If you're at home, you can use a scribe as well, work perfectly fine. You can adjust the size to fit whatever it is you're trying to carve. I'm gonna start with a series of arches. Move it along, find my next center point. And finish off each end with a little half arch. Move that along there. Now I've got my arches drawn, I'm just going to reduce the radius of that circle slightly and come in all of those again. And then I'll be reducing that one more time by roughly the same amount. Once you get proficient at this, you won't have to draw three sets of arches. You can draw one arch and just step it back each time yourself. But when you're starting out, I find it helps to have some guidelines. Great, so now I've got my arches. I just need a square and in the middle of each little bit there, just gonna rule a straight line. And again, if you're at home, use a scribe and then you're not gonna be dealing with messy pencil lines to remove. There we go. This is great practice for our running cut with a V-tool. Starting on my outside arch, pivoting off my left hand there and tapping with the mallet. Try and keep it really consistent with the tapping and I'm rotating my whole body around. I'm shifting my feet so I'm getting further and further around that arch. And I'm gonna stop before I hit the next one. Got a little uneven there, so I'm gonna come in, double-handed grip. If you want really deep lines, you can Go over them a few times. If you're using a much harder timber, you might want to as well.
Okay, so now we have our archways carved. Really good chance to practice your running cut with the VTOL. If you want to make it more prominent, you can go over them again. For your second pass, you might be able to do just the double-handed grip and not require the mallet. Now you've already got your shape. But now we're going to start to add some detail. So I'm going to take my slightly rounded gouge there. I'm using a 718. And along my bottom here, these old patterns are great because you just almost connect the dots or connect the lines. I'm going to get that tool up like that. And this is just a stop cut. And you can really get a great rhythm. You just work from one side to the next. I think that one needs to be a little deeper. Actually, let's deepen a lot of them. Now, I'm going to turn that tool around, line up that top with my previous cut and the bottom with my bottom again. And do another series of stop cuts. So now that I have all these little shapes cut out here, going to come along and you guessed it wedge cut into those now if I don't do my stop cut deep enough my wedge cut will want to rip out don't rip it out just come back and increase the depth of your stop decoration coming up here so going from my center line to my inside of my curved archway I'm gonna do two of those so just whatever tools you've got you can adapt the pattern adjust your tools make it smaller or larger to fit your needs I'm going to come back into all of those and just stop cut, sorry, wedge cut those out. There, prime example of me not going deep enough with my stop. Just give it a wiggle. Nope, just tap that with the mallet. And then re wedge that. Perfect. Now 
and back around to my other side. Deepen that stop cut with a bit of pressure. Now these top sections are looking a little empty. So much the same again. Lining that tool up with my inner arch and my center line. I'm gonna take these consciously a little bit deeper because I, quite a few of these ones in the middle, I didn't take deep enough with my stop cut. Now one of the parts I often forget, if you've got a shallower tool, here I'm using a seven, but maybe if you've got a five or a three, that'd be great for these bits. But if you don't, now really gently, gently holding this here for a little slicing cut, just to make it look like this arch dips more behind this arch here. So I'm using the double-handed grip. Just clean up that dag in a bit. Back around. Same with the other side. Now where I went slightly deep with my little slicing cut there, than I'd originally V-tooled. I'm just gonna get my V and just, just ever so slightly clean that out. Now the fun part, decorative stamps. You can buy them or you can make your own or you can be like me and Phillips head screwdriver I've cut off. Works perfectly. You just want to But there are some great flowers and all sorts of pretty designs and initials you can get. Really finish this off. we have it and there's our simple pattern we've just carved only really using three different cuts thanks so much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something and most importantly I hope you do go and practice those two carving patterns I showed you if you head to my website oliviaoconnor.com.au down the bottom of the classes page there'll be a PDF you can download showing you the steps you can also follow me on Instagram at Olivia O'Connor carving you can search me on Facebook, Olivia O'Connor Carving. Please don't forget to like this video. Any questions, pop them in the comments and subscribe to the Carbotech YouTube channel. Thanks everyone, bye.